Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to walk you through how to build a React application, package it inside Docker container and push it in production in Kubernetes in very simple steps. So we're going to take our Slack clone that we did in our previous video and instead of pushing it in production in Firebase itself, we're going to push the front end in a Docker container. The Firebase backend is going to be the same, but the front end is going to be pushed inside the Docker container. So let's go and see how Okay, first let's go and see how the Firebase hosting is done without containers and then we're going to replicate it using Docker. Uh, first, let's start with Firebase in it. And this is going to let us configure the hosting of the uh, application. We'll select hosting. And then it's going to ask us the directory where the production build is done, which is build. And the rewrite, we should say yes and the rest of them is the same. So once we have configured the Firebase hosting, we can simply do Firebase deploy. And this is going to take the production build that is already built in our React app locally and push it to the Firebase hosting. And it will give us a URL. And if we click, then we have the deployment already there. Okay, perfect. Okay, now let's go and create the same deployment process but using Docker containers. So, first of all, I'm assuming that you already have Docker installed in your machine. If you don't have Docker, go download the Docker desktop for your operating system and you should be able to follow along here. So, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to run a hello world example. So, this is going to download a hello world image from the Docker hub, create the container locally, print the message and exit. So now I'm going to execute a Debian container, uh, run a bus cell inside and run it in interactive mode. So now I can run commands inside my container and I can, for example, print the OS release here. Uh, I don't have a node inside this container image uh, already pre-installed and I don't want to install it manually. So instead I'm going to use a different image for my build of my React application. So I'm going to do a Docker run of my node. And this is one of the official images in the Docker Hub. And there we're going to find node pre-installed. So another thing that I want to do is instead of building on top of a node latest version, I'm going to use node 15.13.0 tag which is a specific tag of a specific release. So if the node releases new versions, my builds are always going to be depending on that specific version. So that they're not going to break basically. And another thing that I want to do is uh, I want to check the images, the size of the images. The images are very big by default. So instead I'm going to use an Alpine flavor, which is this image. Uh, so I'm going to use node and the tag is going to be 15.13.0 Alpine using a sage because Alpine has pre-installed the sage, not bus. And here we're going to find node. And let's check the rest of the tools that we're going to use. NPM is installed, check. Yarn is installed, check. Perfect. So we can use this one. So now we, we know which is the starting point for our Docker file. So let's go and create our Docker file. The first line that we want to create in our Docker file is the from, which defines the base image from where our image is going to extend to from. So the next thing is create define the working directory, which is the directory in which the rest of the commands in the docker file are going to be executed in. So if I do, for example, copy of my package JSON, yarn lock dot, this dot basically is converted into this slash app directory. So let's go and test this one out. So if I do a docker build, uh, I'm using a tag slack clone for my image, and then I'm going to be able to run the slack clone and see the output of my build. So Docker run slack clone and I'm going to run cell inside. So I can do ls and I can see the package JSON and the yarn lock 
he has been copied in there. Perfect. The next thing that I want to do now is I want to execute the yarn install. So this is going to install, download all the dependencies that are defined in the package JSON. So if I do a build here, and then I run again the Slack clone, you will see that now I have the node modules installed inside. You've noticed that it's very, very fast, my build. This is because I already you, I have built it before. And Docker knows that if there are no changes in the packageJSON files or, or in the, these files of this line, then it knows the output should be the same. So it uses the layers from the previous build. And this is very, very uh, good for, for developing. Okay, so the next thing that we want to do is want to copy and this dot here represents the source directory in locally and the, se the second one is the target inside the container image and would be the slash app. So if I do this by building this, if we run it, you will see that inside the slash app directory there are more files now there are all the files from here except some things like build or the uh, git ignore these files are defined in the docker ignore and they are ignored so whenever we copy things from our code the docker ignore is being used in order to ignore some files so you can define here the things that you don't want to add inside your container image um, here for example you don't want things that are being built locally for example the build directory you don't want it to be copied inside your docker image instead what you want is you want to build it inside your container image okay so let's go and build that this would be done with yarn build and if I do this, if I run it now, you will see that now we have the build directory created inside our container image here. Okay, so this is very good. We have the production build created inside our container. Uh, but now we want to run it and in order to run it in containers uh, we're going to use the builder pattern or the multi-stage build which is called so basically this means that I'm going to use a different image for my runtime environment than what I'm using for my build environment so this is basically the build environment and this is my runtime environment and here I'm going to copy from my build, which is, I'm going to define it here with these names. And then I'm going to add, add build. So the, I'm going to copy the build directory from my build image, which is this one. And I'm going to put it in the USR and HTML. So this is the directory where Nginx is uh, locating the HTML files so the, the default uh, directory that exposes okay so if I build this one uh, now if I run it you will see I'm no longer inside the slash app directory but instead, in, instead I'm in the slash because right now I'm no longer inside this image, uh, instead I'm inside an Nginx and you can see the USR share Nginx HTML it contains the content of my build directory <coughs> so if I do now a docker run of my slack clone And if I go to the local host, eighty eighty. Now we can find the output of my uh, application here. Okay, great. So 
And the Slack clone is created so that it does a Google authentication login with Firebase. And if I click login, I should be able to login here. Okay, great. We are inside. But there is a thing that is not working very well. And this is if I do now a refresh here, in Nginx is not going to find any HTML files in c inside this directory because basically what it does, it is waiting, it is looking at. Let me stop this. Basically, it's looking instead of uh, in this directory, it's looking inside this directory, which doesn't exist. So how can we fix this? Uh, there is an Nginx configuration that I have defined, which is this one. And with this one, basically what I'm saying is that the index HTML is the one that you should always use. This is very similar to the uh, redirect to index HTML that we did in the Firebase. Uh, so in order to do that, we're going to use another copy here and I'm going to do a from build and here we're going to do app nginx and this we're going to put it in the nginx conf d directory. So now if I do a docker build and if I do a docker run again Now if I refresh, the even though I'm in a different URL, it will redirect and it will display the uh, React application. And now if I do a login, okay, now it works perfectly. Okay, now that we have created our Slack clone image locally, Let's go and push it to a remote registry so that we can use it in a Kubernetes cluster. So first of all, I'm going to tag the Slack clone that we just created under my own username in the Docker Hub so that I can push it there. Okay, now that I have done the tag, I can do a push and I will just put, do, it, do it like this. Okay, the image is there. Now we can use that image in order to push it in, in to deploy it in a Kubernetes cluster. So I have a Kubernetes cluster configured locally in my command line, and I have a Slack clone namespace which is empty, doesn't have anything right now, and we're going to do a fresh deployment there. So in order to do a new deployment for the Slack clone, we simply need to do create deploy and we're going to define the image to be the slack clone and i'm going to do slack clone as the name of the deployment so this is going to create the deployment object and if i check it you can see that the pods are already up and running so if i do a check of the pods there is one pod that is running i can also check the logs of this pod
Okay, perfect. Seems to be running okay. And now the next step is we're going to do a port forward of the deploy Slack clone. And I'm going to put the 8080 port. Okay, now in locally in the 8080 port, we are going to forward port forward to the 80 port of the deployment pod. So I'm going to check here. If I refresh the local host 8080, voila, the Slack clone is up and running. So right now our Slack clone is running inside the Kubernetes cluster with the Slack clone image that we created in the Docker. And we're up and running. Perfect. Okay, hope you liked today's video about uh, packaging React app in uh, Docker container and pushing it in Kubernetes cluster. Uh, if you liked it, please subscribe and see.